of the Holy Family. We honor Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, who teach us the importance of family life. my friends. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, but we're recording this on, on the Feast of, of St. Stephen, first deacon, one of the first deacons and first martyr of the church. And he always gets in trouble for opening his mouth and preaching when he shouldn't have, but we gather together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bounds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son of his whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Which he made binding for 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, that was quick. Here we are again. We hope that you all had a joyful Christmas celebration with your families on Christmas Day, even though they may have come through Skype or Zoom. Our main focus now is on the Christmas season until the epiphany of the Lord on January the 3rd. And of course, this liturgical season includes today's Feast of the Holy Family, included in the church calendar since 1921. We may be tempted to think that we ourselves can create a holy family. We cannot. Only God can provide the grace for our families to be separate 
for him to be set apart in the world for him. Still, we need to do everything in our power to give God's grace the opportunity to flow into our families and into our homes. And of course, this is what Jesus, Mary, and Joseph did throughout their lives. The primary purpose of this feast is to present the Holy Family as a model for Christian life and love for God. We learn from the Holy Family. They are perfect examples for us. They are a model of faithfulness and trust in God. Joseph, of course, was the head of the family. He was the father, according to the law, and it was he who supported Mary and Jesus through his work and care. It was Joseph who heard God's message to take Mary as his wife. It was he who obeyed God and protected the child and mother by going into Egypt. It was he who heard the call of God to return to Israel, not Bethlehem, but to Nazareth. It was he who taught Jesus his trade as a means of earning a living. From Mary, Jesus undoubtedly learned certain turns of phrase, popular expressions full of wisdom, which he was later to use in his preaching, like, keep some of today's bread dough so that it could act as leaven for the next day. When she mended clothes, she would find a cloth that matched in age not a new piece of cloth that would tear at the mending. Store the best clothes in a chest with aromatic plants to protect them from moths. And of course we have Jesus, who sacrificed his life for us in complete obedience to God the Father. This is the Holy Family, sacred, holy, set apart for God's purpose, exemplary, a model of human virtues ready to carry out God's will exactly. A Christian family, no matter their circumstances, struggles, and even divisions, should strive to be an imitation of the home of Nazareth, a place where there is plenty of room for God, so that he can be right at the center of the love that members of the family have for one another. And this, of course, should be a love that is unconditional, not about our needs, but others' needs. But there is another dimension to the Holy Family, I think, and that dimension hits close to home for us in our daily lives and in this very church building we are in today. We are members of Christ's church. God has chosen us to be disciples of Jesus. Through our baptism, we became adopted sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. Each of us was set on a mission of sanctification to strive to be holy, just as the family we celebrate today is holy. We were called to be set apart, dedicated for God's purpose. We are God's family. We are, if you will, an extension of the holy family that we celebrate today. Every time I walk in this church building, like many or all of you, I am struck by its beauty. I continue to marvel at the detail of workmanship in the altars, at the statues of saints, at the stained glass windows, the pipe organ. But what strikes me the most every time I walk in this sacred place 
is something very simple, yet profound to me. It's the creaky floors. You can't walk anywhere in this church without the floors being a little creaky, or sometimes a lot creaky. That's because St. Mary's Church of the Visitation in Iowa City has been a home of the faithful since just after the Civil War. It is beautiful, and it's old. For over 150 years, people have been called by God to be present here to worship him in faith, in communion with him and each other. Every time we come here, we can think about and pay homage to the thousands upon thousands of people who have come here to express their love and gratitude to God for his blessings in their lives. They have come here striving to grow in holiness, ever closer to him in their lives. Those people down through the years are our spiritual ancestors. Together with them, we are a continuing and growing holy family, rooted in the unconditional love of God, as were Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Let us call upon their intercessions for us and for the intercessions of our spiritual ancestors to strive for holiness, to allow God to direct our lives in ways that are pleasing to him. My brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, as members of God's family of God, let us pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world. For the church, that we may love and care for each other as we live the values of Jesus and his gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations and within families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that they will witness faith and love in their words and in their actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children, that they will respect, honor, and obey their parents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the divorced, the widowed, and for all who live alone, that they will know the love and support of the church for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Charlie and Ann Owen, Sue Durian, Ralph, Ralph Deppel, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Milton, and for all of our departed loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all, may your love bring us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. May we live as you want us to live and love as you call us to love. For you are God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept, accept this the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of God's of name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your, and with spirit. your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, up them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity.
accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. With your spirit. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
during those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your, with your spirit. spirit. Now for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined the most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.